become a student through MBBS Online Lecture 2021 YouTube channel. The topic for today's lecture is about thrombosis. Previously, we have discussed hemostasis related disorder. Thrombosis is basically the disorder of hemostasis. Let's discuss it. Thrombosis is an inappropriate activation of normal hemostatic process that leads to formation of solid mass within the circulation. It's basically abnormal activation that we are not needing it and causes the formation of a solid mass within the circulation that cause occlusion in blood flow. As we also this type of definition we have seen in DIC disseminated intravascular coagulation. It is also widespread activation of hemostasis and coagulation pathway that leads to the occlusion of a small vasculature and causes can cause tissue infarction or consumptive coagulopathy. Thrombosis is also relating to death. When there is a formation of a solid mass within the circulation, such as in this, it can lead to the blood flow from flowing normally. It can prevent blood from flowing normally through the circulatory system and cause many diseases. We will discuss this in detail. So, Rudolf Richo is a scientist who described the term thrombosis and embolism. He also gave the law that is, what shows right. There, there are three causes for the thrombosis. There are three main causes that leads to thrombosis. These are endothelial injury, hypercoagulability, abnormal blood flow. We would discuss these mechanism of endothelial injury causes and how it can lead to thrombosis, hypercoagulability, its mechanism, abnormal blood flow, and how it is it causes thrombosis formation. VIR vascular trauma, that is an endothelial injury, increased coagulability means hypercoagulability, reduced blood flow, that is stasis, abnormal blood flow. Hypercoagulability. Stasis in the endothelial damage is well defined in these this slide. Hypercoagulability is caused by two types of uh, disorders, such as one is hereditary deficiencies or disorder, second is acquired disorder. In hereditary, there is a antithrombin deficiency, antithrombin deficiency such as antithrombin three deficiency. Protein C deficiency, protein S deficiency, factor 5 laden, that is a mutation in factor 5, we will discuss in detail. Thrombin gene mutation, prothrombin gene mutation, this this fibrinogen genemia. While acquired terms are cancer, that can cause hypercoagulability, pregnancy and postmortem period, oral contraceptives, hormone replacement therapy, polycythemia vera, smoking, antiphospholipid syndrome, and chemotherapy. These all are the disorders that relate the, that can cause hypercoagulability. What is venous stasis? Venous stasis is a stoppage or slowdown of the blood in veins. It can be caused by immobility, prolonged bed rest, cost, or travel, advanced age, older age people often are expo often are at greater risk for the venous stasis. Acute medical illness, when there is a, some sort of medical illness that can cause blood flow to stop, major surgery. When there is a surgery, blood needs to be stopped from uh, to prevent blood loss, spinal cord injury, and obesity. When there is, there is a third cause of thrombus, thrombosis, that is endothelial stem, how it can be caused, it can be caused by major surgery. When there is a major surgery, that causes endothelial damage, trauma to the endothelial wall, central venous catheterization. Okay, we will discuss each and every triad in detail with their mechanism. First one is the endothelial injury, which is a main cause for thrombus formation in the heart and arterial circuit. It is not the main cause for the formation of thrombi in venous circulation. 
endothelial injury can cause thrombus formation in heart and arterial circulation. The sites that are more susceptible to the thrombi formation are cardiac chambers, such as in myocardial infarction, over ulcerative arteriosclerotic plaque, when there is an endothelial wall damage that can cause the platelet to aggregate and cause thrombi formation. At the site of inflammatory and traumatic vascular injury, when there is a vascular injury and traumatic injury or inflammation, there is a and it can cause a thrombus formation. These thrombi that are formed in the heart and arterial circulation are rich in platelets. So, endothelium this is a normal endothelium. We would discuss. E the factor that inhibit thrombosis and the factor that favor thrombosis that are normally present in the circulation and present in the wall of endothelium. So we will discuss the so first one is inhibit factors that inhibit thrombosis. First one, first one is heparin like molecules that are present on endothelial wall. These with the antithrombin free form a complex antithrombin free. We know that this is an anticoagulant. Heparin like molecule form a complex with antithrombin free and removes thrombin from the circulation. It also removes factor 9 and factor 10 from the circulation. So, inhibiting the coagulation pathway, removing some factors from the coagulation pathway and in inhibiting it. So, no coagulation occurs. There is a tissue factor pathway inhibitor that inactivates tissue factor 7 complexes. That is also the part of tissue factor 7 is part of extrinsic coagulation pathway. It inhibits it. While there is a thrombomodulin present on the surface of the endothelial cells, it binds thrombin. When it binds thrombin, it activates protein C that with the complex with protein S inactivates factor 5 and factor 8. In protein C cleaves is a proteolytic enzyme. Protein C is a proteolytic enzyme that cleaves factor 5 and factor 8, decreasing their concentration in the blood, further leading to anti-thrombotic thrombotic effect. There are some prostacyclins and some molecules that are flowing in the normal blood that are prostacyclins, PGI2, nitrogen oxide, and adenosine diphosphate, that is ADP. It, they, these inhibit platelet aggregation. While there is a widespread activation of tissue plasminogen activator that activates plasmin, plasmin is a proteolytic enzyme that cleaves fibrin threads for, and inactivates coagulation and clot formation by activating fibrinolysis. This is the factors that inhibit thrombosis. While there are factors which favor thrombosis, these are the endothelial injury that causes exposure of collagen molecule. When this collagen molecules bind to the platelet surface, it causes platelet aggregation and formation of a clot. And we call it thrombi formation. While there are some membrane bound tissue factors that that can cause extrinsic pathway to occur. So, how endothelial injury can be done? There are two mechanisms for the endothelial injury. First one is direct endothelial injury that can be caused by physical loss of endothelium by such as during surgery or trauma. And there's a dysfunctional endothelium that causes imbalance of anticoagulants and procoagulants properties of endothelium, such as in this. There is an imbalance when the endothelium is dysfunctional. So there is an imbalance between antithrombotic effect and prothrombotic effect. Then there are down regulation of these molecules and up regulation of these molecules that can lead to the thrombi formation. So, dysfunctional endothelium can be caused by inflammation 
infection can be bacterial or viral infection turbulent flow over scarred walls such as in hypercholesterolemia there is a formation of arteriosclerosis we call it arteriosclerosis that can cause turbulent flow toxins from cigarette smoking homocysteinemia so imbalance between procoagulants and anticoagulants can cause and, uh, and prothrombotic effect such as activated in the endothelium down regulates thrombomodulin we have discuss the function of thrombomodulin that is that is a anti thrombotic an anti coagulant in endothelium also down regulates and removes expression of protein c that is also the proteolytic enzyme that removes some clotting factors and inhibiting clotting pathway it secrete plasminogen activator inhibitor pai that inhibit the enzyme that is tissue plasminogen activator that activates plasmin so plasminogen activator inhibitor basically decrease the concentration of plasmin that lead limits the fibrinolysis and further further leading to prothrombotic effect so these all changes shift the pattern of gene expression in endothelium to one that is prothrombotic so mechanism of abnormal blood flow how abnormal blood flow can cause the thrombus formation first one there is a normal flow that is we call laminar blood flow such as in this due to any cause there is a turbulence on this stasis of the blood such as in this such as in hypercholesteremia hyper uh, arteriosclerosis there is a turbulent flow in the stasis of the blood due to the stasis of blood platelets and some clotting factors are in uh, become in contact with endothelium when there is a stasis of blood some platelets will become in contact with the endothelium and can cause platelet aggregation this prevents dilution of clotting factors I mean the factors clotting factor that are activating activated here they the due to the stasis of blood these cannot be removed by liver so they this prevent dilution of clotting factor further leading to prothrombotic effect there is a this retard the inflow of inhibitor there is no net inflow of anticoagulants due to the stasis of blood so no new anticoagulants would flow to this direction this promote endothelial cell activation and causes thrombus formation so abnormal blood flow turbulence turbulence can cause arterial thrombosis ulcerative arteriosclerotic plaque while stasis it basically causes venous thrombosis arterial aortic aneurysm post myocardial infarction such as causes cardiac mural thrombi rheumatic mitral valve stenosis hyperviscosity such as polycythemia vera and sickle cell anemia can cause the stasis of blood and lead to the formation of thrombi so due to stasis of blood the thrombi that is formed is in veins while due to turbulence flow the thrombi that is formed in arteries arteries and causes for the formation of uh, thrombi in arteries and heart valves are two that is turbulent blood flow or endothelial injury that is ulcerative arteriosclerotic plaque hypercoagulability this is basically the ability of blood to coagulate is increased in hypercoagulability we have discussed each and everything how the hypercoagulability can be occur thrombophilia any disorder of blood that predisposes to thrombosis hypercoagulability states are associated with venous thrombosis so hypercoagulability states causes venous thrombi to form causes of hypercoagulability these are primary and secondary primary are the genetic where more most common causes are mutation in factor 5 which call it factor 5 laden 
due to mutation in factor 5, the factor 5 become resistant to the proteolysis by protein C. We know that protein C when activated removes factor 5 and 8 by proteolytic action. So factor 5 mutation in factor 5 leads to the changes in the biochemical property of factor 5 that leads to resistance in proteolysis by protein C. So further increasing the concentration of factor 5. So mutation in prothrombin G can cause increased level of factor 8, 9, 11 or fibrinogen. Rare causes are antithrombin 3 deficiency that is anticoagulant, protein C or protein S deficiency that is also a anticoagulant. Very rare causes are fibrinolysis defects such as in plasmin and tissue plasminogen activator, homozygous homocysteine urea. Now secondary acquired causes that are acquired high risk are prolonged bed rest or immobilization. When there is a no prolonged bed rest, the stasis of blood occur that can lead to thrombi formation or hypercoagulability. Myocardial infarction, cancer and DIC, arterial fibrillation, tissue damage, surgery, fracture and burn, prosthetic cardiac well, antiphospholipid syndrome. So arterial fibrillation basically is a abnormal fast heart rate that can lead to the hypercoagulable state. So secondary low risk Causes for hypercoagulability are cardiac myopathy, nephrotic syndrome, pregnancy or oral contraceptive pills. Oral contraceptive can cause the increased synthesis of procoagulants. Sickle cell anemia can cause the high, high viscosity of blood that can lead to a stasis of blood and hyper, high, high coagulability and smoking. Now thrombosis, thrombi can develop anywhere in the circular system and vary in size and shape depending on the involved size, site and the underlying cause. Arterial or cardiac thrombi usually begin at the site of turbulence or endothelial injury. When there is an endothelial injury such as such, uh, and turbulence flow. When there is an endothelial injury in the artery, such as uh, arteriosclerotic ulcerative plaque, that and or the, due to any cause there is a turbulent flow, the arterial or cardiac thrombi usually begin. Whereas venous thrombi characteristically occur at the site of stasis. When there is a blood stasis at any site, venous such at any site in the venous system in venous veins, it can lead to venous formation of venous thrombi. So types of thrombi, three types of thrombi are there. First one is arterial thrombi that we call white thrombi, gray white, venous thrombi that is red thrombi or stasis thrombi and mural thrombi that are formed in the wells of heart chamber or heart chamber, formed in heart chamber. Difference between arterial thrombi and venous thrombi are arteries and heart are involved in arterial thrombi while veins are involved in venous thrombi obviously. Coronary, cerebral and femoral arteries are involved where superficial varicose veins and deep leg veins are the sites where the thrombi are formed. Endothelial cell injury causes arteriosclerosis, vasculitis trauma while there is a venous stasis causes the venous thrombi. Usually mural frequently occluding lumen can invariably occlude it. Gray white friable with lines of zen, pale platelets and fibrin deposits altering alternating with dark red cell rich layer. There is a red in venous thrombi, there is red blue with fibrin strand with line of zen, red or stasis thrombi. Line of zen is discussed in detail in further coming slides. So we arterial thrombi basically grows retrograde means it grows opposite to the direction of blood flow while venous thrombi grows 
in the direction of blood flow. Mesh work of platelet fibrin red cells and degeneration. More enmeshed RBCs and few platelets or stresses. So, anti mortem thrombus and post mortem thrombus, anti mortem before death, post mortem after death. Anti mortem thrombus are adherent to the wall, they are red in color, while line of zen is present. Line of zen basically alternating white and red lines are there present on the thrombus thrombi. Red line consists of more. RBCs while white lines consist of more platelets. So in postmortem clot that is not adherent to the vessel wall. Clot is gelatinous, have a dark red dependent portion where red cells have settled by gravity and a yellow chicken fat upper portion. These are the morphology of the clot. No line of zen bland and non-laminated. No line of zen present in the and the first mortem plot. The morphology of thrombi, thrombi often have a grossly and microscopically apparent lamination called line of zen, which are pale platelets in fibrin deposit alternating with dark red cell rich layer. <coughs> Such lamination signify that a thrombus has formed in flowing blood. So line of zen basically present in anti mortem thrombus. So this states that these are formed in flowing blood line of presence of line of zen shows that the thrombi has formed in flowing blood and in a so their presence can therefore distinguish anti-mortem clot from the blend non-laminated clot that are occur post-mortem these are the line of zen these are white and dark red. Dark red shows the more enmeshed RBCs, while white shows the platelets and fibrin work. Mural thrombi. These are the thrombi that occurs in heart chambers in the aortic lumen and are designated mural thrombi. These are formed in the aortic chambers. Abnormal myocardial contraction, such, such as in arrhythmias dilated cardiac myopathy or myocardial injury or it can be caused by endomyocardial injury is a injury to the endomyocardial layer myocarditis inflammation in the heart or catheter trauma promotes cardiac neural trauma so vegetation what is what is vegetation thrombi data are present on the heart wells are called vegetation this can be blood borne such as with the superposition of bacteria or or sterile vegetation that are non bacterial thrombotic endocarditis fate of thrombus what is the final state of thrombus basic what happens to the thrombus after it forms it propagates it further forms it grows or it is Im or it immobilized. Immobilization occurs, which is a thrombi dislodges and travels to other side. I mean, part of thrombi from its side is dislodged from its original position and travels to other side in vasculature. Or it dissolves by fibrinolysis or it, by the activation of plasmin. Or it forms organization and recanalization. That is the formation of new canal, new channel for the blood to flow, such as in this. Within the thrombi, when there is a thrombus formation in the vessel, there is a formation of new channels that leads to the, that causes blood to flow from it. Or immobilization occurs, such as in pulmonary, immobil, pulmonary embolism, the dislodged part of the thromba travels to the small uh, small arteries in the lungs and blocks there can cause pulmonary embolism or there is a complete resolution there is a complete dissolution of the clot these are the fate of thrombus okay that's all for now 
we will discuss embolism that is a, another topic relating thrombosis so if you like this video like share it with your friend and subscribe to channel we will see you in the next video thank you